So there was a bit of a storm at the French Open at Roland Garros this week, both physically and metaphorically. But it did present an opportunity, and that's what I'd like to discuss in this video. Please like or dislike the video or leave a comment below. That will allow me to produce better videos and more of them in the future. So yeah, the weather hasn't been great at the French Open this year. I wonder why they don't have a roof. Maybe it's because it's in France and they haven't got around to sorting one out. Maybe by 2080, they may have actually managed to get the go ahead to get a roof at one of the biggest tennis tournaments in the world circuit. Then again, anyway, the rain can present an opportunity uh, in tennis. And in general, you tend to find that interruptions in play tend to produce opportunities. So the phrase I've used in the past very often is rain stops play starts trade, I think was a blog post that I did. There are several examples on my blog of situations where that has occurred. And the opportunity that it presents is twofold. Uh, breaks in play in any sport tend to create opportunity. If you look at football, they always have this cliche of saying it's a game of two halves. Well, it truly is. You know, what happened in the first half doesn't necessarily translate into the second half because when the team gets together and they have a chat and a couple of substitutions, the whole game can change. You see that happen all the time. You'll often see me taking a trade on the basis of what I think will happen rather than what has happened. In fact, it's the same in the investing world. If you based all your decisions on things that had happened rather than things that could happen, um, you tend to produce much better results. But if you base it upon things that have happened in the past and try and extrapolate that into the future, that's one of the biggest mistakes you can make. So yeah, interruptions in play, break points are quite a nice thing to do. And of course in tennis, outdoor tennis, rain is gonna be a significant break point. And what's happening is a player has a particular game plan, they're trying to execute against it, they're in the zone, rain delay, they go off the court, they come back and they've just lost momentum and maybe the other player can pick it up. So very often I'll have a go at a trade when we get a break in play, when we get a rain break. Or, you know, there are many reasons that you could get breaks. And when players lose that momentum, it's sometimes hard to get it back. And we had a couple of great examples today where Halep and Radvanska um, just couldn't close out their matches and Radvanska was a beauty. If you look at the chart of Radvanska, um, she was a break and three love up and then lost, I can't remember if it's 10 or 11 games in a row. It was quite a spectacular collapse. And it was quite telling in the post-match interview that Radvanska was not happy. If you have a look at some of the comments that she made uh, post-match, she was basically saying she didn't want to play in the rain and it was a grand slam and what the hell were they doing playing in the rain? This wasn't a, a qualifying tournament or a minor uh, tournament. This was a grand slam and, and why did they have to play in the rain? The interesting thing was um, Halep also said uh, about the this, this same situation, but she just said, well, you know, some players would walk off and I just had to see it through. But there was a lot of commentary actually during the tennis about why they were getting them to play in such awful conditions. And the consensus was that if there were two hours worth of play, then they didn't have to refund tickets that were sold on that day. And therefore they would get them to play at least two hours of tennis. And after they'd played about two hours of tennis, they decided to abandon the rest of the day. Anyway, the obviously it's going to have a big impact on the player playing in those conditions, but breaks of play tend to produce opportunity as well. But also, especially on clay court tennis, um, the ball is going to be a little bit more moist, the court will be damp, um, and the problem that you have with that is that the match slow or the court slows down significantly and it just alters the state of play radically and it becomes much harder to stick to your game plan if it's all of the conditions are fundamentally altered around it. So, you know, I've got a bit of sympathy with the players there in terms of the conditions that they should expect at a major tournament and what they were actually given to play with at the French Open. Now, of course, it works on both sides. Both players have the same conditions to deal with, um, but it's, you know, a radically different proposition to where they started and in tennis, where skill levels between players are so small, um, that tends to extrapolate to much bigger advantages when uh, play is on a good surface and under good conditions. But when you jumble that up and randomise it a bit, then that's going to get scrambled up a fair bit. Um, so when those situations occur, I'm quite likely to get involved and, and have a, a play uh, traditionally maybe against a position that I think looks sensible, simply because I'm just looking for that opportunity. 
And when you're trading, you're not looking to be right. You're not saying who's going to win the match or things like that. You're just saying how volatile is it going to be? Volatility is your friend. If uh, When you're trading, you're effectively selling volatility. So if you see a situation that could result in bigger volatility, it's worth putting a position in the market based around that. Now, you won't do it every time and you won't catch all of these uh, scenarios, but it's certainly worth a punt. And that's what I suggest. You know, when you see these situations occur, especially in tennis, um, then they're always worth a punt. But it could be snooker, football, tennis, darts. All of these events all suffer from the same thing, that when there's a break in play, the leading player often tends to lose momentum. It may not happen, but the likelihood of it increases when you get those sudden breaks in play. And I suggest you keep your eye on that. Uh, for future reference. How would you like to win a copy of Bet Angel? All you need to do is click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel and once a month we will pick a lucky winner who will get a year's worth of Bet Angel completely for free.